the former heavyweight boxing champion versus the former UFC heavyweight king. This crossover battle captured the attention of both the boxing and MMA worlds when it was announced last month. And one man who knows Joshua's abilities better than almost anyone, his former trainer Robert Garcia, has made a bold fight prediction. Garcia believes his ex-pupil Joshua has what it takes to hand Nganu his second straight boxing loss by knockout. That's right, Garcia thinks Nganu hits the canvas against AJ. Let's break that down as we examine the keys to victory for both larger-than-life warriors. Will Nganu's scary power transfer into the ring? Can Joshua rediscover his best form and chin? We'll analyze all angles of this boxing versus MMA super fight to predict a winner. This crossover fight became a reality in January, when both fighters signed on the dotted line for a Saudi Arabia showdown this March. Joshua and Nganu will collide on March 8th with the boxing world watching intently. For those unfamiliar with Francis Nganu, the Cameroonian French athlete took the UFC by storm in recent years thanks to his otherworldly punching power and intimidating physique. He claimed the promotion's heavyweight crown by knocking out Stipe Miocic in a brutal fashion back in 2021. Meanwhile, Anthony Joshua once ruled boxing's glamour division as the unified heavyweight champion by holding three major world title belts simultaneously. His crowd-pleasing aggressive style made him a global star. While they achieved greatness in separate sports, their careers have followed turbulent paths over the past couple of years. Nganu lost his title via decision in his last MMA fight to Cyril Gain before knee troubles sidelined him. He's been publicly feuding with the UFC brass over contract issues, and Joshua was dealt consecutive upset losses to Oleksandr Usyk, sending him into rebuild mode at age 33. So both men are hungry to return to a big stage and revitalize their careers. Now this brings us to the opinion of Robert Garcia, one of boxing's top trainers, who actually worked with Joshua for his short-lived second fight against Usyk. So Garcia has intimate knowledge of what the Brit formerly nicknamed AJ brings inside those ropes. Although their partnership dissolved afterwards, Garcia has made multiple complimentary statements about Joshua's dedication and abilities recently while predicting he will defeat Nunganu. Garcia cites the way Joshua rebounded from those deflating defeats, stringing together three busy victories in the second half of 2022 over quality names like Robert Hellenius to regain confidence and rhythm. According to Garcia, staying active is exactly what Joshua needs at this point in his career, rather than dwelling on losses. He also revealed a few other things about AJ in another interview. He's got a fight coming up against Francis Ngannou. First of all, your thoughts on Francis Ngannou in the sport? Obviously, a great performance against Tyson Fury for a novice. I think he had a great performance because uh, Tyson Fury, I don't think he trained one single day for that fight. I think he thought it was going to be a walk in the park. And it came to be that uh, that Francis was in great shape and, 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 and was hungry to, to prove everybody wrong. And he did. But I think it was more because it was more because uh, because uh, Fury just was not in shape, didn't train, was not ready. I think Anthony Joshua is always in shape. Anthony is a very dedicated fighter. I think Anthony will knock um, Francis out. Oh, yeah. In terms of AJ and how he looked at his past fight, do you believe maybe he's turned a new leaf in terms of the time that you spent with him to now? He did, 100%. You know, after, after the fight we had uh, with him, you know, myself and Rudy Hernandez told told him and his team, keep him busy, stay busy, because that's what a fighter needs. That's what somebody like Anthony Joshua needed. Him fighting once a year, you know, uh, or even longer was wrong for them. So we told him, keep him busy. Even though it's not with me, I'm happy that they kept him busy last year three times, three times last year, and he's got a fight coming uh, coming up pretty soon also. So, so they're keeping him busy. That was the best thing they could have done. Garcia believes Joshua has used that invaluable activity to essentially train through fights and rediscover parts of his arsenal that make him dangerous. Garcia says AJ relies more now on sheer athleticism and physicality along with a wicked body attack rather than looking overly mechanical. When you combine a physically primed Joshua likely entering this fight in his best current form with the intimidation factor his stellar 23 KO record brings, Garcia feels Nganu will crumble under that assault. He guarantees we see the best version of Anthony Joshua, who dominated the division pre-Usyk, and expects him to add Nganu to his highlight reel of brutal KOs. That's glowingly high praise, from someone who recently helped the former champ prepare for battle. However, on the flip side, while Garcia is complimentary towards Joshua, his assessment of Nganu seems overly dismissive. 
He somewhat baselessly claims boxing legend Tyson Fury only lasted 12 rounds against Nunganu because Fury underestimated the UFC icon and didn't properly train, but the evidence suggests otherwise. Yes, Francis Nganu suffered his first boxing loss to Fury by decision last year in a shockingly competitive affair. But Nganu deserves much more credit for exceeding expectations against the best heavyweight on the planet. This was far from just Fury floundering his way to victory. Nganu displayed accelerated development as a boxer just one year into his training. For someone with minimal experience, Nganu kept pace surprisingly well and pushed Fury harder than most anticipated. His natural athletic gifts shouldn't be discounted. Even in his mid-30s like Joshua, Nganu possesses true heavyweight power in both hands with scary reaches. Technique can be refined, but that thudding force is always a looming threat, especially early on before stamina becomes a potential issue. Nganu's fearsome punching power changed the complexion of every UFC bout during his peak. One clean shot could flip a fight upside down, and while that power didn't culminate in a knockout of fury as many predicted, there were certainly moments that caught the Gypsy King's attention and backed him up. The question is, can Nganu produce similar moments against Joshua, who has shown recent vulnerability by hitting the canvas multiple times in losses? If Nganu lands cleanly, does AJ's chin betray him again? All signs point towards Anthony Joshua attempting to take Nganu into deep waters by dragging him into a high-paced firefight from the opening bell. He'll look to test the MMA phenom's conditioning and set a pace his body hasn't adjusted to. That proven two-fisted attack Joshua has returned to relies more on rhythm and volume rather than loading up on single shots. Combinations finished with thundering hooks to the body and head, when in close could wear Nganu down exponentially quicker than what he's used to. If Joshua pressures Nganu while using his near 5-inch reach advantage and better footwork to control distance and angles, he can win rounds early through sheer activity. Nganu largely operated in short explosive bursts during his UFC run. Joshua needs to disrupt any offensive rhythm before Nganu generates full power. Basically, Joshua must take Nganu outside his comfort zone and into an all-out boxing match sooner than later. Trade big shots early and tempt Nganu into ill-advised brawls that sap energy and cause him to fade late. Then Joshua's seasoning, poise, and experience competing in 12-round wars could be the ultimate differentiator. If AJ avoids the knockout blow and doesn't get drawn into playing a dangerous game of trading recklessly with the bigger man, his engine should allow him to take over and impose his will as the fight progresses. As for Nganu, it goes without saying his overriding focus needs to center on landing fight-altering power punches. Whether it's perfectly timed counters or bullying Joshua back to create openings, everything flows through his knockout weapons. Nganu must cut the distance aggressively and not allow Joshua to dictate pace and spacing. Get inside the longer man's reach and attack the body viciously to slow him down. Going headhunting from the outside plays into Joshua's hands. Defensively, rolling with or absorbing Joshua's bigger combinations will also be paramount. Nganu showed a sturdy beard against Fury's heavy artillery. Remaining composed under fire gives him his best chance to respond. The reality is that Nganu can never truly match a lifelong boxer in the craft department. He won't win rounds purely boxing on the outside. The scoring cards are stacked against him the longer this goes. His only path to victory is rendering Joshua unconscious. So Nganu essentially has just six rounds to land a fight-altering punch before he likely hits a wall stamina-wise. If the bout enters the second half, Nganu loses all momentum while Joshua pours it on. The question ultimately becomes, can Nganu's awesome power travel with him from the octagon to the ring and produce a shocking early knockout, or will Joshua survive the onslaught and drown his opponent late? Analyzing this unique clash, I see Anthony Joshua's skill set and big fight experience being the ultimate difference. While Nganu is always one big shot away from flipping the odds, unless he can severely hurt Joshua in those first six rounds, I foresee stamina betraying him badly down the stretch. Joshua's engine and conditioning should see him surge ahead. I predict Joshua cruising once Nganu hits the wall after round six, continually walking him into blistering combos. Eventually, Joshua's superior hand speed and blistering combinations will drop the exhausted Nganu for the knockout in the final third of the fight. So here's my breakdown and prediction for this epic crossover showdown between Anthony Joshua and Francis Nganu. 
Thanks for watching, and if you enjoyed this news update, like this video, subscribe to our channel, and press the bell icon to never miss an update from us. This is your host signing off. Goodbye, and see you in the next video.